In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a for loop or a while loop into a recursive function. For example, if we have a loop function and we have one, four, one, this means we're going to print one, two, and three, and we increment one each time, as you can see, and we will not print out number four. How about this one? Well, if we have negative two, five, and two, it means we start at minus two, and then we plus two every time we go up. So minus two goes to zero, it goes to number two, and then it goes to number four. And if we plus four and two, it will be six. But six is larger than five, so we don't do anything here and we stop at this point. As for this loop, we have three, one, and minus one. This means we start at three. So we decrement by one every time we go. So three goes to two. And then we don't print out number one here because that's the number that we don't want to print out, right? The last one says six minus two and minus three. So we start at six, then we minus three every time we go. So six becomes three, three becomes zero. And if we decrement by three again, it will be negative three, but that is smaller than minus two. So that's why we stop here and we don't print out anything. And how about these ones down here? Well, these are invalid cases. So if you put one, three and minus one, then it doesn't make sense, right? Because you want to go from one to three. So this number has to be a positive number. In this case, it is a negative number. So we don't do anything here. How about this one? Well, we want to go from three to one. So this number must be a negative number. But if this is a positive number, then we don't do anything here as well. The first step to writing any recursion is to draw the recursion tree. And let me show you how to do that. So here we have loop, we have negative two, five, and number two. And there are two case scenarios here. The first case is when this number is a positive number. And then the second case is when this is a negative number. So in this case, it is a positive number. So we must go with the positive case scenario. And let me show you the recursion tree for that. This function is going to call another function. This time it's going to be loop and it's increasing, but let's just call it up. And we have negative two, five and two. And what this is going to do right here is it is going to print out the negative two. Then we will do the same thing since this is recursion. So this is going to call itself. We have loop up. And since it is increasing by two, then this negative two becomes zero. And then the rest stays the same. And here the computer will print out number zero. And then we repeat the recursion. Zero plus two is two. And then the rest stays the same. Then we will print out number two. And then we do the recursion again. Two plus two becomes four. And then the rest stays the same. We print out number four. And finally, so four plus two is six. And then the rest stays the same. As you can see here, this number is number six and it's larger number five. So this is where we stop. Here is our answer and it's gonna print out negative two, zero, two, and four. What do we do for the case when this is a negative number and it's decreasing? So we're gonna do the same thing, which is very similar, but slightly different. So this is going to call the function loop decreasing. And instead of writing the word decreasing, I can just write the word down since it's way shorter. And then we're going to pass in the same parameters. At this point, we will print out number six and then we do the recursion again. Six minus three is three. So we have three and then the rest stays the same. And then we print out number three. Three minus three is zero. And then the rest stays the same. And we print out number zero. Zero minus three is a negative three. And then the rest stays the same. So here we see that minus three is smaller than minus two, which means we have to stop. So the final answer is six, three and zero.
let's go over the code for the recursive loop so we define this loop and we have start end, and the step as our three parameters there are two case scenarios the first one is when the step is increasing so let's do that so if the start is less than the end and the step is increasing then we will call the loop up function so loop up and we just pass the same parameters into here the second case scenario is when the step is decreasing so else if the start must be greater than the end and the step is smaller than zero or it's decreasing then we call the loop down so the loop where it is decreasing and we just pass in the same parameters else we're just returning from the loop so basically what this means is when our case scenario does not belong to the first one or the second one it does not belong to either of these two then it means the input is invalid so we just exit we don't do anything let's write the loop up so define loop up we pass in these parameters the base case is if the start is larger or equal to the end then we return we stop this recursion else we just print out the start and then we loop up and this time we increment the start with the step and here is the end and the step stays the same so as we are increasing the start when the start exceeds the end or when it is equal to the end then we should exit from the recursion last but not least how about the loop down so define we have loop down we have start end, and step so the base case is if the start is smaller or equal to the end then we stop the recursion else we are going to print out the start and recurse again so you might be wondering why is this plus step well because in this case step would be a negative number so plusing a negative number would be the same as minusing the step finally we test it so here we have loop negative 2 5 and 2 as you can see it starts at negative 2 and it goes up 2 each time and it stops at 4 so this is correct we should also test for the other case scenario when it is decreasing and here as you can see it goes from 6 3 and 0 so this means that our code is correct and that is basically it Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you also want to buy me a coffee for free, also hit that subscribe button. In the next video, we will talk about how to add the sum from 1 to n using recursion. So basically what that means is if n is 4, then you take 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which gives you 10. And how do you do this in recursion? Well, I'm going to talk about it in the next video.